Today we're going to be replacing the number six diesel fuel injector on this 2006 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD with a 6.6 Duramax in it. Now before we get started, one of the most important things to mention is you will get a code with your new injector or replacement reman injector. Make sure you put that to the side and hold on to it. That is your contribution code that you'll need to add in with your scan tool once the job is done. In this case, we're only doing one, so it's easy to keep up with the number itself. However, if you're doing a bank of injectors, say four, or if you're doing all eight, Make sure you keep these labeled as to what injector each one goes to, so that way when you go through and do that contribution code on the scan tool, you know which one goes to which injector. Before we get started, we're going to have to do a couple things. First, we'll disconnect both the driver and passenger side battery. That way we don't have any issues with any electrical connections or any type of you know, grounding issues, things like that. Then we're also going to need to remove the antifreeze from the system, so we'll do that a couple different ways. We'll start with the drain cock on the radiator itself and remove as much fluid from there as we can. And then we'll move over to the lower radiator hose. That way we can get as much antifreeze out of the system as possible. Just in case we have any antifreeze get introduced into the system, we don't want any of that going down into the head. And we're going to siphon out anyway after the fact. But just to cover ourselves and make sure we don't cause any issues with coolant getting in the system where it shouldn't be, we're going to go ahead and drain that as well. So we'll do that first. We'll get the batteries disconnected and then we'll move on from there. We're going to start by removing our breather assembly here. Then we're going to come over and we're going to disconnect our main engine wiring harnesses. We're going to pull those out of the way. And then we're also going to take the bracket that those are attached to and remove those as well. Once we get that out of the way, we'll be able to see a little bit more of what we're working on. And then we'll move on to removing our downpipe on the turbo itself. We're going to get that out of the way because cylinder number six sits just below the downpipe itself. Once we get this out of the way, we'll be able to see a lot more, and then I can show you exactly what we're looking at and what we need to remove to get that injector out. Now that we have everything on the top side of the motor as far as the breather goes and our downpipe and some of our electrical connections removed, we can actually see the injector from the top side, but it's a little bit hard to get the camera angle there. So we want to show you where the injector sits. And to do that, what we did, we removed the fender lining on the driver's side. So just above the wheel there, there's a few clips that you take out and the entire fender lining will come out and pretty, pretty easily and in just one piece. And so what we've done is, is we've got the camera angle showing you here. The injector sits for cylinder number six right here. This is going to be our T for our low pressure fuel going in. And then we have our pigtail here for the electrical connection. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to remove that pigtail, of course. We'll pull that T out and then we can get to the actual fuel line that's connected from the fuel rail to the injector itself and then move on further. Luckily in this case, we actually have a, another Duramax engine on a stand where we can get a much better view of this injector and what's required to remove it once you get to this point. So we'll merge over to that engine stand and that Duramax engine over there and show you exactly how to remove the lines and how to get the injector out as easily as possible. Keep in mind, in this setting, obviously there's gonna be a lot more difficulty getting to the injector because of where it is and how many other things are around it versus what we're going to show you on the engine stand. So a lot of patience is key in this. There's also the potential that you may have to remove several other components to get a little bit more access to it. In our case, we, we could do the injector on this one without removing too many things. So we'll show you again on that engine stand exactly what's required once you get to this point. But again, we can see the injector from the top side. We can now see the injector from the fender lining here. And we'll actually use this access point to get a few of the lines off and I'll show you again how we're going to do that uh, on the engine stand itself. We've now moved over to the engine stand where we can get a much better view of the 6.6 Duramax and the driver's side of the engine that we're working on today. Now you'll see we have cylinder two, four, six, and eight here. We're working on cylinder number six, but one of the things that's important is to remember we need to pull the low pressure fuel lines from the injector itself and to do that, we'll just pull this metal clip back and then we'll use a pair of pliers to pull from the middle of this T here straight up. Here's why you need to make sure you do it that way. Cylinder number six, I left to the side here because it's already been pulled incorrectly. You can see it broke off and here's the remaining piece. So it's very important that we use a pair of pliers. I'm gonna show you on cylinder number four that all we wanna do is grab right in the middle and pull straight up. If we do that, we're not going to wobble it side to side and have problems with it breaking in half or leaving the actual plastic now into the cylinder. So we'll pull the clip. 
will grab right in the middle of the line and pull straight up. And as you can see, no damage, and we can access that injector now. Very important that you do it this way, because if not, you end up with a broken tube right here, and you'll end up usually have to replace the entire line rather than try to put a new T in there. So just make sure you do that, and be careful about that one piece right there before you go and do anything else. Make sure we pull that out correctly and don't cause any damage to it. Now before we can actually pull the injectors, there's a couple more things that we need to do. The first thing being, obviously we need to pull the pigtail off, get that out to the side. And from the view that I did this, I was actually looking through the fender well, so that's why I took that fender lining out. You have a great view of cylinder number six just over the tire. And what that gives you is access to the actual fuel tube or delivery tube that's here. And what I was able to do is take a wrench right through the fender well, get to the tube, and just a turn at a time, get that loose. And then from the top side of the motor, the same thing, the only difference being, I went from the top and I used an offset wrench so that I could get in and get a couple turns at a time. And it's tight, but it is doable this way without removing just about everything around it. Now again, this is for cylinder number six. Every cylinder is gonna be a little bit different, but once you have those loose, you can then remove the line itself. And this is very important, the next step. Once we have the line loose, we need to make sure that we cover this port almost immediately. This port is where the fuel is going to come into the rail, and if any debris gets in there, it can cause damage to the injector, it can actually cause damage to the entire fuel system. So we'll wanna have something readily available to cover this port just as soon as we pull that line off, so that way when we continue the work on the injector, nothing falls down in there. It's also a good practice, before you even get to this point, take shop air or some type of compressed air and just blow the air all around this area to get as much debris that's maybe settled around on top of the the, the head itself or around the, the, the rail, the fuel rail itself. Get that out of the way, that way when you do pull that line, you don't have the chance of getting debris in there. Now, once we have the fuel line itself off, and again, I'm going through the fender well through doing this, I can actually reach the bolt for the injector itself, that's the hold down bolt. And I've already loosened this one up, so you can see, once I get that loose, I can actually pull the bolt. And really the only step left to do at this point, once we have the bolt out, we have the pigtail removed, and we have the fuel line off, you can see just below the bolt, I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit for you. Just below the bolt here, you have this little notch that's sticking out of the hold down. And underneath that notch, there's a little disc. Take a flathead screwdriver, get underneath that disc and underneath that hold down. And we don't wanna be aggressive here. We just need to put a little bit of pressure upwards and it's just one little crank at a time. And once we've got it free, we can then pull that injector, holding on to the hold down. as one unit. You will want to make sure we keep this because this is going to go back to the new injector that goes in. And once again, we want to have something ready to cover this port. As you can see, there's already some debris right around the hole for the cylinder for the injector to go in. So we want to make sure we clean that off and not let that get down into the cylinder itself before we replace the injector with the new one. Another thing you're going to want to make sure you do before you put the new injector back in, just in case any debris or any fluids did fall down into the cylinder, we're gonna take a siphon pump or some type of suction tool and push it down into the cylinder through the hole where the 
nozzle of the injector would normally go, and we're going to suction out or siphon out any fluid or any debris that possibly got down in there. We want to do that because once we put the new injector in, we don't want to have any debris or any foreign objects down there that could cause problems with the new injector once we get it in. Now that you've seen from the engine that's on the stand, the easier way to get access to that number six cylinder injector, I've gone back to the truck and pulled the original out. And as you can see, it was definitely in need of replacement. We have that out, we have the new one in, and just remember the installation procedure for the new one is just a reverse of what we did on the old unit, pulling it out. And it will be the same struggles that you would have had pulling the old unit out because there are some restrictions as far as room goes. But again, it is very doable without removing everything around it. And keep in mind, this is just on cylinder number six. So you may find that cylinder number eight or cylinder number three on the other side or seven is a lot more difficult. There might be more things to remove. And that is very true in this vehicle because depending on the cylinder itself, there are different things around it in the way. The lines, the actual feed tubes for the fuel are a little bit different on each cylinder. So there are going to be different struggles per cylinder. We just showed you cylinder number six here today. So just keep that in mind. The procedure may be a little bit different for each cylinder. Now, if you go back through our channel, you'll find we also have a video that shows you how to install or input this contribution code for the cylinder itself. We have another video in the playlist where we'll show you how to use the Snap-on Modus tool to input this code so that we can get the cylinder contribution done on the number six cylinder with the new injector. Then we'll go through and we'll clear any codes that were associated with the number six cylinder uh, and make sure there are no other codes that are present at this time or any that have come up in between the process of getting this job done. And hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to replace the number six cylinder diesel fuel injector on this 2006 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD with the 6.6 Duramax in it.